Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kulp. I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It's August 8th. It's Thursday. It's 2024. Hope you're having a good day. As always, this is serious talk that everything that affects you. And every now and then we try to help you out with other things in life, which will do a little bit of that at the onset of the show. But first, if you do not get this radio show in your city, we'll post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on our Twitter feed, which is now X. And if you don't follow us on X, you should follow us on X. We're pretty cool. And you can email me, but just be nice. We also post everything at uh, podcast apps. Uh, and we, we talk serious talk on everything that affects you. We will do the markets, the economy, uh, jobs, unemployment, taxes, deficit spending, scams, shams, corruption. And every now and then, we do health. So as you know, and I don't pull any punches, I don't drink. You know how many drinks I've had this year? What, what are we, in uh, August? F- five. I've had five drinks this year, and I think I beat last year by one. Um, I don't do drugs. Uh, I work out, keep myself in shape. I eat pretty smartly and well, but you never know what's going to pop up. As you know, I had five or six, as you get older, of back spasms a while back, and miraculously, they went away. Uh, Recently, uh, uh, both my elbows, they're like little golf balls on them, and I'm going to see an ortho next week. Uh, Everybody thinks it's the... um, Uh, bursitis, but one person said it could be gout because it's on both elbows. Who knows? We'll find out, but something else. So today, this morning early, uh, I had some skin cancer taken out. And the only reason I even knew about it was because about a month ago, Uh, On the front of my leg, this big spot shows, not a big spot, but a spot. I I, I thought it was out of nowhere. So I decided to get uh, just a checkup on, you know, whatever. So I didn't realize what they do, but when I get there, they did this whole started with the scalp and they went all the way around and they found five things that they sent away to check on. It came back, benign, 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 hmm, oh, one of them is skin cancer. And what's funny is they called me up and she said, basal cell something or other. And I'm like, oh, so what does that mean? Oh, you got skin cancer. But she was like very nonchalant about it. And whenever you heard the word cancer, you're like crapping in your pants. But they tried to explain to you, no, 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 this is not, you know, the oh my god type unless you let these things go so i'm just letting you know i kind of lucked out uh i'm gonna go every six months for now on uh to check myself out and just letting you know as you get old especially if you're in the sun may want to look at it so what they did what was funny is is that I didn't know what to expect. I was out in 20 minutes, half hour. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, They did what they had to do right now. It feels really, um, and I'm supposed to travel tomorrow, and I don't, you know, it's, ew, because it's right in my uh, pectoral. But I'm just mentioning this to you. I've read about people that died of skin cancer. And especially if you are in the sun. So just letting you know, I'm good. And what was funny was, you know, you always, when you hear that word, you're like, 
as I said, but I did my work on it and stuff like that. And the doctor says to me, yeah, I have, I've, had, I've done it six times already. I go, what do you mean six times? Oh, I've had six of these. I'm like, what? You've had what? No, I've had six of these. So just a little heads up on something like that. If you see something as you age, I know they tell you get the colonoscopy every five years at certain age, whatever. I'm going to let you decide all that fun stuff. I'm not here to preach and whatever. I'm just letting you know just my day in the morning. And now, man, oh, man, it's, it's, it's a stinging type, icky type, yicky, icky little pain in the ass pain as I stand up here. And then I read this, what they, I was supposed to do today, sit in a chair most of the day or sit up in a bed. And no, I worked all day. I, need, I didn't read the instructions for the day. And maybe that's what the, the problem is. Anyway, that's our start of the show today. Your health update today, ladies and gentlemen. Always trying to help you with everything uh, that's going on in life in general um on july 11th uh, we're segueing by the way notice the big word uh we're segueing july 11th the day before everything's going fine everything's cool no big deal whatever 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 we're a little bit worried because the mar the nasdaq and the techs were acting so damn well and we're reading every day about how six stocks are uh, 30% of the S&P and eight stocks are 48% of the NASDAQ 100 and whatever, whatever, whatever. And we're happy and all that. And then we got what we, we consider an important sell signal. And when we give you that a sell signal... Uh, nobody blows the whistle. Nobody calls us. We're just big believers in the market dictating uh, to us certain things. And sometimes we believe it's loud and clear. Sometimes it's more on the subtle side. Uh, but we thought that was a good one. It was somewhat akin to uh, March 8th when you had that big reversal and basically what it led to was the the semiconductors hit a high of 5217 went all the way down to 4288 this time from 5931 it went down we're not making this up by the way to 4290 on monday the socks hit within two points of the low on the last correction and i must tell you we didn't even recognize that until last night. And maybe that's what we would call good symmetry. I don't know. So on Monday, we really didn't get any signal except the NASDAQ was down 1,000 on the open, finished down 500. On Tuesday, we were up strong but finished ick. Yesterday, it was gross. I mean, it was really gross yesterday, just finished at the lows of the day. And as we always say to you on this show, we have no clue about tomorrow. And we don't really even attempt to have a clue about the next day because you really can't tell. And then there are moments that are just wild, wild swinging reactions. If you think about the just the last, let's go back about six days. The... Well, we'll use the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ on mm, August 1st was a Thursday, hit 17,791 and closed at 17,194. 600 points to the downside. The next day we gapped down and finished down about, uh, what, 400 NASDAQ points. And then the next day we gapped down 1,000 points but only finished down 500. And then the next day, at one time, we were at 16,620, up almost 500, but only finish a couple of hundred. And then yesterday, we get up to 16,709 and close at 16,195. 
500 points, and it kind of sort of all happened, you know, just throughout, which leads to today. And there's all kinds of news coming out. Oh, is it a recession? Oh, is it a depression? Oh, is it inflation? Oh, is it deflation? Oh, what's going to Fed do? Is they going to do anything? Are they not going to do anything? Oh, I don't know. So today, interesting enough, before I went to get my little skin cancer out, I wrote a pre-market report to the peep saying, hey, the market's flat in the pre-market. The Dow was down a little bit. The NASDAQ 100 was flat. Hey, yay. Because we, I, I don't like up 500, down 500. Well, at 8.30, they came out with a report. We'll explain. Give you the news. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. So, hey... So we get these economic numbers, and there's been worry about the jobs. Okay, fine, dandy. And at 8.30, they came out with uh, some sort of, they call them initial claims. And sorry, I think the numbers are all bullcrap. There's no way of them knowing, but okay, let's, let's, whatever. So the expectations were initial claims for going jobless was supposed to be 242,000. They came in at 233,000, so they only beat by 9,000. 9,000 less people uh, went for unemployment. I'm not so sure that's a big deal, is it? It shouldn't be. It doesn't say things are that much better, does it? Anyway, the market gaps up pretty much. And and look, when we give you the final numbers and tell you that the Dow was up one point something percent, we're going to tell you the NASDAQ was up about 2.6, NASDAQ 100 about 2.8. They don't sound big, but it's still a pretty big day. The semiconductors are up 6% today, though they were the worst group recently dropping 28%. So on this news, and let me be clear, the market moved on this news. The Dow finished up 683, the S&P 119, the NASDAQ 464, NASDAQ 100 546, transports 255, though I do want to say there are really no new highs in the market. It tells you how weak things are. I have maybe on two hands actual new highs in the market. And I'm actually going to give you out the symbols not to tell you to buy them, to, to review them. But as I give you these numbers, I just want to make sure you know a couple of things. First off, number one, as we said, as the market was dropping, we're always isolating the strength. What ain't going down? And we can tell you, like I might as well right now, new yearly high list, go daddy. 
Mercado Libre. Spotify is close. FICO, which is Fair Isaac. It's kind of fair. Uh, Intuitive Surgical is close. Uh, Motorola Solutions. Something you probably never heard of called Parsons. Something you never heard of, prob- uh, Transmedics. I got a couple, I have an oil stock in something called Viper Energy. That's it. There are a few other highs, but some of them are dollar stocks, no sales biotechs, and the like. And we isolate them, and if we think the market's not going to go any lower, we'll see. But we just want to make sure of a couple of things, what happened today. So, ASML today was up 40 to 876. You got that? It's still down 224 points, dollars, from two to three weeks ago. Micron was up $5 and change today to 92. It was 157 in June. We're just doing some semis, if you don't mind. Uh, Lamb Research was up 51 today to almost 800. It was 1130 on July 11th. You catching my drift? The NASDAQ was up 464 today to uh, 16,660. It's still down 2,011 points from July 11th. And we are not throwing cold water on today's action. We're just letting you know the context. The NASDAQ 100 was up 546 today to 18.4. It was 20,700 July 11th. The Dow was up 683 today. It's still down 1,900 points, almost 2,000 points from July 11th. So we just want to make sure you know that, but we're not going to shrug off today. And I'm going to make a statement that is of import. Our guess, at least for now, at least for now, is that Monday, and we're not necessarily talking the Dow, but Monday, the NASDAQ, which was down 1,000, finished only down 500. We think that 500, add the 500 that it caught it back, we think it's going to be very tough to break that right now based on what we're seeing this second. We think there's probably some more to go, and we'll know a lot more in the days ahead. We hope the low has been put in. There's been a lot of damage done. Leadership, not many, as I stated. There are good reaction to earnings. We'll take it day by day. But Monday now, starting to feel, and let me be make another point. Violence in the market usually happens at turning points. So maybe, maybe, we'll see. But very good day, no cold water on it. Uh, Volume picked up a little bit today. I don't know if they, you know, we talk about confirmation days and all that stuff. I'm careful about that here. We just had one a while ago and failed miserably the next day. So we're not going to go there. We'll just say to you, very good day. Let's hope it continues. Definitive in price today. I wish there was more of an explosion in volume, but it was better than the norm. And I've yet to do my scans. We'll see what we can find. But much, much better tone off of what I thought was nothing news. But as we have said to you, it's not the news. It's how markets react to the news. 
that's what is always going to matter most because markets are the entity that telegraphs things going forward and sometimes doesn't take much to change minds especially when you're dealing with a lot of nonsense Japan elections that I think are somewhat imbecilic I'm still nobody because the media sucks how are they not up in arms how this thing got to Kamala Harris being the uh, candidate and not doing a primary she was selected not elected I think that's bull crap but I don't run the show up next what else do I have to tell you on the markets and then there was a press conference today with Donald Trump my thoughts this is the one only investors edge America is talking. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. With Gary Kultbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. All right. What else? Gold. We're just going to say gold is in a trading range going back to April. Hit a little higher in weeks ago than April, but we're going to call trading range since April. A big breakout out of that would be meaningful, and it tried. And as I, full disclosure, we bought it uh, in mid June and stopped out. And it's a little higher than where we sold. There's your gold. Uh, the 10 year yield bouncing up after getting trashed 10-year yield went basically from 4.3 to a low month and leave no doubt listen carefully if you want to be able to follow something that's dictating the market this second it's this next statement the 10-year yield normally yields coming down good for the market yields going up bad for the market but yields going down have indicated that problem with Japan and indicated softer economy or recession yields going up indicate I wouldn't say Japan has their act together but that nonsense may be out of the way for now and maybe the world ain't ending on Monday it is by no coincidence that the market had that nice Nasdaq reversal halfway yields reversed the yields on Monday hit the 10-year yield uh, 3.669 yet closed at 3.785 and now we're back to 3.997 up again today so that is of note that is of note and we're going to watch that closely the semiconductors very big day today up 6.86% the semiconductors but it has gone from 5931 and it closed at 4730 today even though it was up 300 and it's just back to yesterday's high so 5931 to four that's 22 let me make sure of that 1200 points on 5930 uh, that would be about, it's still over 20%, which has me stopping and saying the semiconductors got back above the 200-day moving average today. But man, oh man, I mean a deep drop. The NASDAQ held the 200-day moving average on Monday, as did the NASDAQ 100 that is going to be vital you take that out then we're talking overall bear markets you hold 
opportunity. Simple as that. So just letting you know, the semis are still down 20, and then there are things like a micron, uh, 157 to 92. That's 865, eh, 42%, 43%. Just letting you know. The financials, very important. The XLF, which is the Financial Select Index, got a little bit back above the 50-day. Straight down, a little bit back up. Important. The KW, KBWB, which is the NASDAQ Bank Index, almost there. Trying. The regional banks held the 50-day on Monday after just coming straight down. In case you don't know, pretty much 59 down to 51. That was about 16% in three days. As we have stated, there's been some serious drops, but no cold water on today. Don't really need to get into individual names, but in the Dow, Amgen was down 20-something yesterday on earnings, back up 11 today. Uh, Caterpillar's been weak economics, up 10. Uh, Goldman Sachs, one of the stronger big names up 12 and that's above the 50 day moving average the strongest what i consider to be mega caps facebook meta which had a good reaction to earnings before it got trashed because of the market back above the 50 day but sitting in a range going back to march and as you know we made some serious hay on meta uh starting in uh, january sold into march and april bought back again made a little coin and just everything was up today, pretty much. Most everything green. That's the best way I can put it. I would suggest probably leads to a little bit more upside. But then we're going to hit something, and you know what that is, right? Massive overhead resistance. The normality would be backing and filling. What does that mean? Test and retest, back and forth, repair the damage. But in the case of wicked, wild, swings, fed, Japan, I, I, I'm open to all outcomes. But I really, today feels like a confirmation of what happened on Monday. That's what it feels like. I did not say we're off to the races. It just feels like today was a confirmation of Monday. Not the the Dow was only dropped 1,200 Monday, finished down 1,000. But the Nasdaq, which is a lot more meaningful to me. And now we'll see what else going forward. I don't think it's going to be easy. I will tell you I had no inquiries today about shorting the market. I've had a dozen of them in the last day or so. Why? Because price changes people's thought process. And today was a good day. You also had some good reaction to earnings. Uh, you ever hear of Boot Barn? I've never been in one. 8% uh, earnings growth was good enough for 16 bucks or 14%. Go figure. Eli Lilly, and here's another context, was up $73 today to $845, but at the high of two and a half weeks ago was $966. You're always in context, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So my job's going to be tonight measuring stick. I already know where the leadership is. I knew it yesterday. I knew it the day before. I knew it the day before. But you really need confirmation on the market. Why? Because if the market continues to sink, they're going to get everything. And I can tell you, Meta, one of my favorite big name, when it gapped up last week, it went from 520 down to 450 because of the market. So if the market craps out again, potential trouble. So we need the right market conditions. Today, I'm not saying goes a long way. I'm saying it goes a, w a way 
towards confirmation that Monday may have been worst of. If I w- had the market do my bidding now, I have a couple of quiet days. Little pullbacks, but you know the market doesn't give a crap what I want or what I think. We'll see how it goes. So that is a pretty good synopsis of what we're seeing, what we're thinking. And man, oh man, it has been harrowing. And just so you know, we pretty much missed the drop. And it's still harrowing to watch. Still worry about the complacency. Everybody's on the tube. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Everything's good. Don't worry. Yeah, great, 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 great. Just the correction. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Everything's great. The problem with all that, whenever we do go into a big bear market next, you know what they're going to say? Everything's fine. Everything's great. Great, 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 great. Bull market, bull market, bull market. Just the correction. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Remember that. And let's hope the worst is over. But there's a lot of broken stuff. Broken. We'll see if the broken gets better. Again, we're open to any and all outcomes. Up next. Hey, there was a press conference today. Election time. This is the one known the investors at. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Caldwell. Hey there. All right. So, uh, Let me read these headlines to you. Uh, By the way, you know who Tim Walls is, right? He's the guy that's now running for vice president with Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Uh, Headline is Tim Walls, the Midwestern dad Democrats need. Headline, Tim Walls could take it to the house. Uh, Comparing them to a running back. Uh, headline, why Tim Walls will be a potent weapon for Kamala Harris. Headline, Harris, Walls, and Democrats' joyful campaign. Headline, Democrats have needed someone like Tim Walls for decades. These are the headlines. Do you know what the headlines are on J.D. Vance? He's weird. He's weird. As we have told you, and we don't really need you to t- need us to tell you these things. It, if Trump picked Mother Teresa, she would suck also. If Kamala Harris picked Jeffrey Dahmer, they'd figure out how to make him into a hero. Obviously, those are two extremes. But you get the point. But that's what's happening with the media. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's also unfortunate that this whole thing was the royal scam. Great album by Steely Dan. This was all pre-planned. Let it time go. Then get Biden's butt out. And they threatened him, and they got him out. And it was too late for a primary, 
We'll go with her. Why? You know what a primary does. Do you remember the last ones before Biden? Uh, Kamala Harris said Biden was a racist. You remember that, right? They can, w- couldn't, wouldn't want infighting with only three months to go. Great royal scam on you and I, but the way it is right now, the left loves the left, the right loves the right, and the media kisses the you-know-what you of the left, and they're doing a great job of it. No interviews, just teleprompter, 18 days, it, it's laughable. And the reason is, yesterday on this show, I did a questions, what my interview would be with Kamala Harris. Uh, it wouldn't last five minutes before she would smack me in the face because she could not answer easy to answer questions because then she'd have to tell you who she is. High taxes, massive regulations, rules, fees, fines, mandates, oversight, control, giveaways, you name it. We don't want Trump either, but it's a binary choice. A little bit of Trump today. Press conference, very undisciplined. If I had him as I was an advisor, I would compartmentalize him into just a few tidbits and hit him hard. But he has to go all over the place and unfortunately loses a lot in the shuffle. But he's got some proposals out there. One, uh, getting rid of taxes on Social Security. By the way, I don't know if you know this, a long time ago you didn't pay tax on Social Security. Now, I'm not sure if he meant for everybody or some people, but not a bad idea. You know what we think of less taxes? It's good news. People keeping more of their money. And you know what we think of Social Security, the greatest con job in the history of this country? Never needed it. Never needed a Social Security administration. All they had to do was a a forced retirement account for you. Goes into this account, goes into 10-year bonds. Every 10 years they redo. You know how much more money you'd have right now and still have control of it and not have a Social Security administration that's running out of money because they spent it all? So good idea. He talked lower taxes, less regulation. It's what we want. We believe in we the people. Now, I don't think he's going to be able to get it done. He'd have to have the House and the Senate. And it's going to be a tough road. Don't know where it ends up. I think the uh, Senate will could, very good chance of going Republican, but who knows? The House should have been a blowout last election, but that got screwed up. And let's take away the blame for the second. I give him a six out of ten on the press conference. Should have been a ten out of ten. Why? The questions were of friendly questions. They didn't have the real media asking questions. I think I heard a couple of people in the real media, but, you know, the harsh ones. If I was a candidate, I want the people that hate me asking the questions. If I was a conservative candidate, I'd go on CNN and MSNBC. Do you know why? Those are the people that don't want to vote for me. Imagine if I can convert them with my we the people talk and how higher taxes don't make the wealthy poorer but prevent you from becoming wealthy less police doesn't help your family it helps the criminals you know logic hope he uh, put his best efforts in they have now announced they definitely gonna have a debate in September They should have three or four. I should be the moderator of one. They'd be throwing watermelons at me and and super soaker shooting me after five minutes, though. 
because they couldn't take my questions. Anyway, great day in the market. Probably get some upside from here too. Then the rubber is going to meet the road. We'll be on it. I think we're on uh, Fox Business Network tomorrow with Neil Cavuto, noon hour. Uh, even with my stitches and staples and all that crap. So you all have a great evening. Drive carefully. And that's Fox Business Network. When you get home, do like we do. Quite simple. Make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They will feel better. You will feel better. I promise. Peace out. Thanks for joining. Serenity now. Bye-bye. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.